Hello everyone! A couple of you requested if I could tell you the story of Broxigar. It's an epic tale which takes place mostly during the War of the Ancients, which takes place 10,000 years ago. Now this is a story spread out over three books, so I'll have to try and focus it on Brox as much as I can. Get around and listen to the tale of an orc who managed to strike a god. Broxigar, Broxigar the Red, or simply Brox, or Brox, or however you want to pronounce it, is the brother of Saurfang. He has been fighting for the Horde during the First, Second and Third War. During the Third War he was tasked with holding a mountain pass and keep the demonic forces from getting through. He was the only one of his party left standing when the Orcus reinforcements finally arrived. Although everyone honored him with his victory, he himself felt guilty about it. Guilt for not falling together with his comrades and received the honorful death in battle. Now don't get me wrong, he wasn't exactly suicidal but he was looking for an opportunity or just another chance for that glorious honor that made orcs sing songs about you. One day the Shams of the Horde felt a strange anomaly and Brox together with Gaskal were sent out by Thrall to investigate. On their journey they saw the great red dragon Coriolstras together with Ronan who were looking for the same thing. Coriolstras had received a warning from Nosdormu that something was wrong with the time waves and that he needed help and Coriolstras himself had asked Ronin to help him with this. Brock saw them flying in the sky and he figured to himself to follow them because maybe they would lead him to the anomaly or maybe they would lead him to a chance of once again entering in glorious battle. Little did he know that by following them he would lead himself to Nosdormu who was trapped in a time wave anomaly. He was doing everything in his powers to keep the time waves from collapsing but this also created a massive void. Brox told Gaskal to run away from this but instead he tried to hide in a rock outcropping and this caused him to die a horrible death by the hands of the vortex. Brox was sucked up just like Coriolstras and Ronan had before him and the time waves took him back 10,000 years. To the time where the Well of Eternity had not yet imploded and the Highborn were dabbling with magics beyond their understanding. In this time period, Queen Azara, Xavius and the Highborn had made contact with Sargeras. They tried to create a portal and bring him and the Burning Legion into our world. In the original timeline, the Night Elves had already won and they stopped the summoning of Sargeras, which also caused the well to implode and the land of Kalimdor to split apart. Now this is all time travel stuff which is usually pretty messy and it brings up a whole bunch of questions. If I understood the story correctly, the anomaly was created by the old gods who wanted to mess up the time waves and by doing so break free out of their prisons. It was their hope that by messing all these things up that the high elves would actually win, Sargeras would come to our world and they would use the energies that would be released to break out of their prisons. Incidentally, it appears that because these three were sent back in time that the Burning Legion was actually stopped. It's, it's just a time travel mess and my advice is just to enjoy the story and to go with it. Anyways, Brox of course didn't know where he was or when he was. He had expected to be ripped apart by the vortex just like his comrades, but no matter what had happened, he knew that Thrall would want to know more about this place, about its inhabitants and what their intentions might be. If they were responsible for this anomaly, then he had to go and find out. He could die in a glorious death later, his first duty was to protect his people. Unfortunately he was discovered by the night elves but he was a veteran orc and he wasn't captured without a fight. It was because of the power of three moon guards which made him powerless which allowed them to imprison him and to put it in perspective normally it just takes one of these magical spells to take someone down in his case it took three. Pretty badass. They placed him in a cage for now until they had decided what exactly to do with him. One novice priestess of Alun, she saw Brox in his cage and she could not believe how her people treated him. Tyrande Whisperwind made her way to the cage and asked the guards if they would stop her from bringing him some more food and water. They would not stop her and so she did. She talked with Brox, asked where he came from and he told her that he was sent by Thrall, leader of the orcs. She couldn't really make sense out of this of course because Thrall wasn't even born in this time period so she asked further on which was a big mistake. Brox thought that she was interrogating him like the moon guards had before but only now she tried to do it with kindness. He gave her his ball back trying to end this conversation and as he did he was struck by magic. 
a spell fired by Illidan, who thought he was protecting Tyrande from this beast. She was very mad at Illidan for this, and she told him that Brox wouldn't hurt her. She turned around and asked Brox if he would allow her to heal his hand. He offered his hand, flesh burned away, and Tyrande prayed to the moon to aid her. She was granted this gift from Mother Moon, and she was able to heal his wounds. From that moment on, because she showed him respect, because she healed his wounds, Brox honored her. He called her a shaman, which came as close to a healer in his mind as he could, and he was in her depth. Time passed on in the cage and Brox prayed to the great spirits to give him one last glorious battle. One more chance to be worthy, but he knew that his fate was in the hands of the Night Elves. Malfurion Stormrage, twin brother of Illidan, was at the time studying the arts of the Druids with the demigod Cenarius. He had reoccurring nightmares about the Well of Eternity and the Highborns, and they had just begun his lessons of walking the Emerald Dream. Inside the dream, he found out that the Highborn were casting some wicked spells, but he wasn't exactly sure what to make of this. Surely their beloved Queen Azara would never try to harm them. So he made his way to Tyrande to talk about this, and she told him the tale about Brox who was inside the cage. After talking with Brox and hearing his fantastic tale of how he came to their land, Melfurion felt deep within himself that Brox was vital in his concerns, was vital in the, the feeling of dread that he had about things to come. He could not just stand by and let things take their course, so he, together with Tyrande and even Illidan, freed Brox from his cage and took him to the glade of the forest lord, Cenarius. The human Ronan and the dragon Coriastras had also found their way to the glade, and as Ronan the human and Brox the orc lay eyes on each other, they were about to fight. However, Cenarius would have none of that inside his glade, and you don't really argue with a demigod like Cenarius. In the meantime, the Highborn had managed to summon Hakkar the Houndmaster, and with him came the fell beast of the Legion. These fell beasts had followed Malfurion and Brox to the glade, and they were about to attack. The Night Elves, as they had captured Brox, they had taken his weapon away from him, so he couldn't exactly help defend the glade. But Cenarius had an idea, and they would make him an even better weapon. Together with Malfurion, they crafted an axe out of a branch, formed it to suit the image that Brox had in his mind for the perfect weapon. To make sure that it was stronger than any mortal forged axe, Cenarius placed his own blessing on the weapon. Let it always swing true, always protect its master. Let it be wielded well for the cause of life and justice. Let it add to the strength of his master and in turn, let him strengthen it. It was light, it was stable, it was an extension of Brox himself, and he put it to great use, man. Now I can tell you all the battles that Brox faced in this story, but that would take a very, very long time. Know that his war cry managed to halt even the demons. Know that his axe and his skill with the weapon cut through horrific demons as if he was slicing through butter. Know that hell came to our world, and Broxigar gave them hell back. Gradually throughout the story, the High Elves managed to summon more and more demons. They even managed to summon some of their powerful leaders, like Manoroth and even Archimon to our world. Of course, as time passed, the Night Elves became aware of the actions of the Highborn and they created a resistance. Amongst the resistance were Malfurion, Tyrande, Brox, Ronan and even Coriastras. Illidan was also fighting against the Legion, but in his own special way. As you can imagine from a veteran orc as Brox, he was on the front line slaughtering many many demons. He even guarded Malfurion as he walked the Emerald Dream to stop Savius. And when he went to Deathwing his lair and collected Demon Soul, Brox was right at his side man to, to the lair of Deathwing. Can you imagine? The real moment of glory for Brox, however, came at the end of the story. He had learned to deal with his depression, and as he saw the Night Elves and the Demigods, and even the Furbolgs and the Tauren and the Irvin, all the forces around him stand up against the Legion, he realized that dying for the sake of guilt was the way of a coward. He was now fighting with his fallen brothers in mind, not feeling guilty, but honoring their deaths while holding the line and trying to save the world. The critical moment in the War of the Ancients had come. The portal was nearly finished and Sargeras was ready to step into this world. Melfurion and the others had the plan in mind of using the demon soul to destroy the portal and they, together with the dragons, made their way to the well. There they were greeted by the Highguard on shadow bats and also the flying demonic sorcerers of the Legion. In time they may have defeated these forces, but time was exactly what they didn't have. Brox looked around him and he saw that this battle was for the wizards. Up in the sky he is a warrior, could do very little and he also realized that Sargeras would win if nobody stood in his way. Even if they did eventually manage to close the portal, 
it would just be too late. Farewell, wizards, he roared. It is my honor to have fought beside you and the rest. Ronan glanced back at him. What are you planning to... And Brox leaped. The red dragon attempted to catch Brox, but the giant's astonishment made him react far too slowly. The orc fell past his claws, dropping relentlessly toward the center of the well of eternity, and the blazing storm now reaching its peak. Howling with anticipation, Brox felt the wind tear at his face as he descended. His grip on his axe so tight that his knuckles had turned white. He grinned, just as he had the day when he and his comrades had stood ready to protect the past at the cost of their own lives. As Brox neared the portal, his perspective shifted. He saw movement within, ranks and ranks of demons, all preparing to follow their lord into the mortal plane, demons stretching into forever. Of Sir Garrus himself, Brox saw no sign, but he knew that the demon's fearsome master had to be very, very near. And then, the orc passed through the gateway. They flow toward him, an endless river of utter evil seeking his death. Come, roared Brox, kicking aside the severed limb of another demon foolish enough to get within reach of his axe. He stood atop a mount of dead flesh, his many kills. The orc's body was awash in his own blood, but a strength such as he had not felt in years filled the greying warrior. A chaotic fury surrounded the lone guardian, the madness of the realm of the burning legion. There seemed no ground, no sky, only an insane swirl of fiery colors and untamed energies. Had he not been so completely focused upon his adversaries, the orc suspected that he surely would have been driven insane by now. Behind him, the portal burned with evil purpose. The green flames danced as if demons themselves and seemed to draw the burning legion like the proverbial moth. Brox had expected that he would overcome immediately, but not only had he so far survived, he had kept not even a single demon from reaching the gateway. How much longer he could last, the age warrior did not know. For as long as the portal existed, he hoped. The enchanted axe gave him an edge, one that Brox had utilized to good advantage, but the weapon was only as good for as long as his strength lasted. A movement of black at his right caught the orc's attention. Instinctively, he shifted to meet it. And he was battered horribly by a force that made the mind of the demons before him seem as nothing. Brock's shoulder cracked and he felt several ribs collapse into his organs. Sharp, agonizing pains ripped through him. He tried to rise, but again the veteran warrior was battered relentlessly. His legs were crushed and his jaw broken on the right. Brock's tasted his own blood, a not unfamiliar thing. One eye was bruised beyond opening and it was all the orc could do just to breathe. But his one remaining hand still gripped his axe. Overcoming everything, Brock swung, hoping to hit his attacker. The blade encountered an obstruction, and at first, Brox's hope rose. However, the squeal that immediately followed informed the badly injured orc that he had only caught an eager fell beast trying to close in on easy prey. Such a pity. Despite the words, there was certainly no pity in the terrible voice thundering in his head. A vast shadow blanketed the orc. Such a pity to waste such delicious ability for carnage. With a strained roar, Brox managed to right himself. The axe came spinning around. This time he knew that it was no mere demon hound he hit. A resounding bellow of outrage deafening the injured warrior. Through what remained of his good eye, Brox had caught sight of a titanic horned figure in molten black armor whose thick mane and beard appeared to be composed of wildly dancing flames. The orc could not make out the giant's features well enough, yet somehow knew them to be both wondrously perfect and terribly awful at the same time. Then the titan raised one arm and in it Brox beheld a long wicked sword, the upper half of whose blade had been broken off. What remained was jagged and still very capable of slaying. Through broken teeth, the orc began a death chant. The jagged tip impaled him, bursting through his spine. Brox's body quivered uncontrollably and the light in his eyes dimmed. The axe slipped from his limp fingers. With a sigh, the orc at last joined his comrades from the past. And thus ended the life of Broxigar, but not before he managed to strike a god, Sargeras himself. The first and only mortal to this date that has stood against Sargeras inside his own realm and he manages to land a strike. Sure, it was just a very small wound and sure he had an enchanted axe. 
but a weapon is just dead. It was the orc behind it that faced its own demise and roared at it with a challenge. This small cut was eventually what would allow Coriolstras to distract Sargeras, giving Malfurion the momentum he needed to close the portal and prevent Sargeras from entering our world. The well imploded, the Great Sea was created, and it was Ronan who found Brox's axe as it washed upon the shore. With the timeline back in order, it was time for Nosdormu to send them back home, but they would take the axe with them. Coriolstras took it to Thrall as he disguised himself as an orcish shaman. Hail Thrall! The elder figure called in an oddly strong voice. Hail, savior of the orcs. Who are you? You are not Kalfar, Thrall growled, referring to a shaman. I am one who brings news. News of a valiant warrior, Broxigar. Brox? What of him? Speak. The warrior is dead. But dead, sending many enemies before him. He has again fought the legion and cut down so many, it would take a day just to count them one by one. The legion? The orcs' worst fears were realized. Where? Tell me so that I can gather our warriors and fight them. The almost hairless elder shook his head, then gave Thrall a grin without teeth. There are no more demons. Braxigar and those fighting beside him defeated the legion, and it was your warrior who stood at the pass again. Even when faced by their master, the figure bowed his head respectfully. Sing songs of him, great Thrall, for he was part of those who saved the world for you. For a time the younger orc stood silent. Then, this is true? All of it? Aye, and I bring this, all that remains to honor a hero. Despite his seeming infirmity, the shaman brought forth a huge twin-edged axe. Thrall blinked, somehow not having noticed it earlier. I've seen nothing like it. It's a weapon crafted by the first druid, formed from the magic of a forest spirit, fashioned especially for Brox's hand. It will have a place of honor, Thrall whispered, gently taking it from the crooked figure. He eyed it in admiration, light as a feather, and from the look of it, wood, from bottom to head, even the blades, but clearly a capable axe. How is it you have this? But the shaman did not answer, because he was no longer there. In time, Thrall would grant the enchanted axe to Fura, the niece of Brox. She would use the mighty axe to free Malfurion and bring down the Nightmare Lord in the Emerald Dream. But that is a tale for another time. For now, know and sing the song of Broxigar. Broxigar the Red Axe, or simply Brox. He bought the future at the cost of his own life, a price he had been longing to pay, and has earned him a place amongst the orcs of legend. I hope you all enjoyed the story of Broxigar, I hope I did it justice. If you want more details, I can highly recommend you to get the trilogy called The War of the Ancients, which tells not only the story of Broxigar, but the entire story of many of the heroes of Warcraft. Subscribe if you like my videos, and until next time guys, see ya!